Without the forest, we do not have water. And without water, we cannot survive. When we take a look at the forest, some people might be asking, what are these guys doing? There is a lot of research that we do in that forest. But what has happened to forestry now is that 95% or more of those trained, qualified foresters have retired. And the young people who are coming in do not have the requisite skills and knowledge to be able to manage the forest. The terrestrial environment, which comp comprises of what we, we're talking about, the forest, the parks, the wildlife, come together to sustain our, our land and our are very important in sustainable development because of the ecosystem services they provide. We may look at just the recreation of the parks, but when you combine with the role of the forest, the trees and the water cycle, the oxygen cycle and nitrogen cycle, I think the forest plays a major role in most of the earth cycles. People seem to undervalue the forest and its importance. We are considered to be small island state and small island states are becoming vulnerable every day to the impacts of climate change, soil erosion, natural disasters, species considered to be critical species, endangered species that without our forest we cannot protect. We are all familiar with the phrase from ridge to reef and in the context of the OECS where our islands are so small in geographic size, we cannot make a distinction between the reef and the ridge. In most of these islands, the ridge is the backbone of rainforest. And that really is perhaps the apex of the ecosystem. So it is vitally important that we preserve that. A lot of life in the small states depends on the vitality of that reef to ridge paradigm. There are three critical conventions. The first one to do with biodiversity, the UN CBD. And if you consider our forests, our forests are the homes of a key plant and animal species that are very, very important, you know, for our, our way of life, important even for our culture, important for even um, medicinal purposes, our food. And so forests are cross-cutting uh, across the entire gamut of our environmental conventions. It was like, hey, um, there is a scholarship to go to Trinidad to do a little training. Are you interested? I was like, training about what? He was like, forestry. I, want, I look at him and I laugh. I like forestry. I said, Angola don't have any forest, so why would I want to go? He was like, yeah, but still, you know, you could go and see how it is. I said, okay, all right. My supervisor nominated me to be the one to go. And I was kind of scared because I'm like, oh my God, this is the first time I'll be traveling outside of Cephasin and Grandines, away from home for two years. How is that going to just be? Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I've been at a catch where I'm here. A year into the forestry division back home and I was told about the scholarship. So it was actually in and then out again. I was here about capacity building, capacity building. So I always keep liaising with the officers above that if a course come in so I could get an opportunity to go and further my education. I wanted to know more in forestry and to further my education in forestry because I did not want to just remain as a assistant forest officer. Maybe I want I want to be a future a consultant, an environmental consultant. Yeah, I love the environment. And my daughter, eight years, I wanted to enjoy and experience what I experienced when I was a child. I heard about the scholarship through an employee from the ministry. So I made inquiries um, and expressed my interest. I was stunned down, right? I was kind of disappointed, you know, but I just left it alone because I understand how the ministry works. And then late August 2023, I heard about the same scholarship and I applied and here I am. I decided to take the opportunity because I would honestly be the first BVI lander with a forestry degree. I was so interested because I wanted to get the whole of what forestry is about and the scholarship is sent me after university to sharpen my skills and such. I learned about this opportunity through 
I think it's our biospace and ILM point person at the Forest Wall and Parks Division. Although it was very short notice, it was quite a rush for me to get here. I actually pushed through and because I wanted to improve on my knowledge based on forestry. So I wanted the opportunity to educate myself, but I didn't have the finance to do it. So when the opportunity came about, I appreciated it and I grasped it. I see it as a good opportunity to gain whatever skills needed to ma manage our forests sustainably and conserve whatever resources we have on the island. The University of Trinidad and Tobago um, houses its agriculture and forestry unit in the Ekiaf campus. And the Ekiaf campus has a really rich history in forest training in the Caribbean. It has over 70 years of experience. With regard to forestry training, that training is over 55 years. The Diploma in Forestry incorporates foundation courses, which is there to really lay a lovely core background um, introduction to some of the courses that will follow. So those foundation courses will be um, plant biology, college algebra, um, microeconomics, communications, etc. And those form a nice basis for what we call the more specialized or forestry related courses, which form part of the curriculum. These courses really uh, look into the forest aspect, conservation, protection. So it will include courses such as um, forest resource protection, sustainable forest management, watershed management, um, wildlife conservation and management. Agriculture is taking place, forestry is taking place. All these actions are taking place and we must understand the importance of those interactions, um, more so because we are limited by space and obviously we are surrounded by water, as with all of these Caribbean islands. As a result, understanding those linkages would better enhance our opportunities for advancing in terms of um, methods for conservation, methods for um, adaptation, methods of mitigation, methods of risk reduction when it comes to some of the um, natural disasters that may take place as well. Because that I love nature, forestry just automatically come a part of me. I don't really like the office. I like to be outside in the forest doing some kind of adventure, exploring something, than to be in the office sitting down behind a computer writing. <laughs> I was, I'm a nature lover, so that is what encouraged me to be a forestry officer. With all the rivers, always going to the rivers, seeing the lush green forests, just wanting to preserve the forest for the future generation. As a child growing up, I did a lot of things on Grand Bay Estate. I fished, we go for agriculture, fruit, fruits, root crops, everything on the estate. We used to get from the estate to feed ourselves because it's a rural um, community and most people depend on this area for survival. I like being outside, you know, forest and vibes, enjoying everything. It's just how unique and different everything was. Basically, you would not find the same lizard in the same spot every time you come. You'd find something new or something interesting to look at. We used to go over crab for the entire day and survive on sinking to same wax apple and so on. I like the forest, I like the rivers, I like water. Growing up, that's what we used to do. So nobody had pipe on water, so you had to go fetch water. Uh, washing day, you had to go down to the river. A very rewarding occupation is in the forest, in terms of, in not only the forest, in terms of environment management, from the ridge to the reef. Because if you involve in terrestrial management of the environment, it plays a very important part in, in the marine and the surrounding waters. Eastern Caribbean Institute of Agriculture and Forestry. And when I went there in 1990, that was what transformed my life from a local person who was working in forestry as a deliberate worker to getting that training opportunity. This is where I got to understand the operations in forestry, mensuration, silviculture, sociology, forest management, a range of operations that really built my capacity. Most of my life in forestry, there was nothing like climate change. We never heard of climate change until a few years before I left. But our officers now need to understand how climate change is impacting our forests. More forest fires, lower rainfall quantities, and all of that. So our knowledge in that area must be built around how we can build resilience to our forest resources. 
to reduce the impacts of climate change. This is an area that has not been particularly attractive in the past because people were just seen as planting trees. Now we recognize the importance of that resource in the overall ecosystem. It is vitally necessary that we build a human capacity to ensure the sustainability of the forest. Knowing that, you know, forestry is always at the center of natural resource management, our focal points comprise many senior level foresters. And at that meeting, they made a case for us to target our resources or some of it at training of forestry officials. So later that year, we were able to put out a tender whereby we asked educational institutions if they can, you know, provide some training for foresters within the subregion. That's really the origin of this effort. Knowledge is power. Obtaining this knowledge, it will enhance me to, you know, be marketable, work anywhere, be able to be, you know, be more versatile in terms of knowing stuff. This opportunity means a lot in the sense that not only going back home and getting a promotion, but also another opportunity of visiting other islands and putting what I've learned there because instead of employing person outside of the OECS or outside the islands that they take we as the students to go specialize in whatever um, area that we're specializing to go to Dominica or to St. Lucia for a project and that is a major opportunity that I would love to take up because traveling is also something that I love to do as well too and not only just to say that I'm traveling but to see the different environments and biodiversity and everything within different countries. Yeah, I never know much about the importance about the forest as being outside you would say like they're just trees. But then what we um forest you know the importance of trees in water production, soil conservation and those things. Yeah make me more interested and appreciate the forest more. I came here because I wanted to learn more about the forest because I didn't have no idea about forestry. It was, it was a whole new thing to me. The only coast I mean, is interesting. But the one that stands out for me really like it was agroforestry and silviculture, those two. So I really enjoy everything about it. Two courses outstanding so far pertaining to the forestry course was agroforestry and silviculture. In agroforestry, we learn about how we can f implement forestry and agriculture in one without destroying the forest as much as possible. In civic culture, we learn, we learn the different terminologies. You learn how to speak as a professional in forestry because you learn the terms, you know, at a, at a group of trees called a stand or a coop. If you were to sell trees, you know, learn how to measure the tree and to value the tree. So you know the values, you know the importance of managing the forest. Civic culture. That's the most exciting. I'm more of a wildlife individual and I'm excited for wildlife management because of birding and not only just birding that other species of animals that is within around us and in our ecosystem. But to say really looking forward to a particular course in forest, not really. I'm just here and as the course is coming, I'm like a sponge sucking up all the knowledge. Agroforestry is a, is a, like say a process dealing with plants and animals. So while you plant in your trees and your crops, you could always plant for animals as well to let them feed and you could bring up your whole farm system. I'm mostly excited for the machinery courses. I'm already familiar with using most of the machinery, so I just want to learn whatever little things about it that I can, or maybe some of the machinery that I haven't used as yet learn how to service them proper and you know, really work them better and be more efficient with them. The few courses that excite me the most right now for the future would be the GIS courses where we, we learn to use software and equipment that simplify the work and simplify capturing data and organizing data. That's something I was interested in before. And seeing as we're going to go more in depth with that, I'm excited about that, as well as the climate change course. Natural resource management, because we get to be outside and actually get your hands dirty. It's because I'm a very practical person. I'm not really the inside office person. Although I could do it, but I prefer it's outdoors.
conservation, protecting and preserving the ecosystem. You know, it will be fulfilling to be part of the management and conservation effort to protect and to restore all the biodiversity and everything, you know, we had lost. The truth is I'm looking forward for everything because I feel like I'm happy to be in another institution. I'm happy to obtain the skills that I got so far. The course I'm really looking forward to is the National Parks and Protected Areas course because that is what I think to myself I want to specialize in for the time. Parks and Protected Area Management is one of those that kind of gives you um, that approach to what we do within the recreation capacity. Uh, there are many different types of parks, many different types of recreation areas um, that can be managed. And once managed appropriately, can then work for the benefit of the institution, the organization, the government, the country. We also want to be able to provide those protection components to those uh, areas. Obviously, the concept is that we can't protect um, a tree alone. Uh, when it exists in a forest, so we have to protect the entire forest, right? We also want to take into consideration that within parks and protected areas, we are protecting some of, these, some of the organisms within those areas that are environmentally sensitive, um, that will then allow uh, managers of those parks, protected areas, um, agencies to then better equip themselves to be funded internationally, locally, whatever the case may be, but at least we will have the technical capacity and how to manage and how to protect those areas. When we look at the management points of uh, standard procedures for how you develop a park, how you develop the protected area, um, protected area tourism is something that has been going on for years. It's just that, you know, in recent times, we've been bringing it towards the Caribbean, bringing it to these small island states where tourism is um, pivotal. As a result, being able to manage those facilities gives us a better hand, a better understanding about what impact tourism can provide for us in two ways. One, how tourism can help spread the word, help conservation, and two, how us in these communities, in these regions, in these small, smaller OECS countries can then protect our resources and then advertise them to our, our tourism industry. I really want to see the forestry department come back to what it was before. Like I said, I've been there for a while, but I never had no training. And when I was there, I see I had a lot of trained staff that was here, but most of them retired. So it have a fall. So I really want to see it come back up to where it was, and I want to be part of that venture. One thing I want to do is to be the best forestry officer I can be. I know back home, it have a lot of young people like myself in the department right now. And you see the older ones and them stepping aside, like retiring and stuff like that. So I just want to be there to know, know the knowledge and be the best for the country as well and to OECS as well too. My training here in forestry, it would apply in every sense to me having my own business as a landscaper. Because you need to know the knowledge about forest, about orientation, all of that ties together for you to be able to work a land you know, to clean a garden, to do anything. Most of my time employed at the Forestry Division is within the National Parks Unit. I'm looking forward to educate myself more. So when I go back home, I can put into practice to enhance the ecotourism sites, the protected areas. So not only Dominicans, but worldwide can come and enjoy. OECS can come and enjoy our ecotourism sites. Hopefully to get another opportunity of forwarding my studies even more, specifically in the wildlife program, if possible, that can happen. That would be so amazing. I actually want not only just to be in St. Vincent Forestry working, but even probably becoming a consultant in wildlife. Well, graduating from UTT, I intend to work with others to enhance, uh, develop well, policies and so on and conserve within that with the local communities for a better Grenada, a better Caribbean in terms of climate and so on. When I leave is to share my knowledge to each and everyone back home. Also not home alone but more regionally too. And to further my studies, maybe go on to do masters. If I'm offered another opportunity to follow my studies, I will accept it. But if that don't happen, and in knowledge gathered for the two years I will be here, I will apply it, the forestry department, chair improve the department, and the country as a whole. 
to now have 11 regional students back on campus bringing their own experiences and their, those, their own points of view have really impacted positively on our program. Um, it has also um, highlighted to us what are maybe some of the new areas or other areas we need to focus on and, and, and introduce or enhance in our, in our curriculum. And so we can now be able to sit in the next five years that we have built around a cadre of people in the ministry, whether it's in the region, and that we know we have taken them from that level to that level. So the capacity is there to be able to take on the various tasks and responsibilities of forest management in the region. You cannot sustain benefits of a project over the long term if you do not have people trained to understand what exactly it is that they're dealing with. This is an EU-funded project. In acknowledging the European Union, the depth of our gratitude should be measured not simply to the extent of the funding provided for this initiative, but for the incalculable impact that it will have on our ability to secure our future. For our sponsors, thank you very much for this opportunity, and trust me, it won't go to waste. A very hearty thank you to the OECS, the ILM project, and the EU for giving me this opportunity. I'd also like to thank the EU for financing this project. This is very important and critical for the Caribbean island. Thank you, European Union. Keep it up. A very big thank you to OECS, ILM. I very would love to see more PVA landlords here in the future. Thank you also to the EU. It's very appreciated that you funded this. Merci OECS, ILM, APEU for opportunity here. Merci. We're not giving the forest or the environment to the future generation. We're borrowing it from them. And we need to protect it for them. <laughs>